Hi, this is Dr. P, and I'm going to ask you the four most important questions you can answer when starting a game design. This is the big picture. There are always lots of questions to ask. These four are the most effective at the very beginning to help you shape your conception of the game. And a lot of people answer these questions without even thinking about it. They just assume they're going to do it a certain way. There are even larger questions in game design for which there's a separate video, but these are questions that apply specifically to creating a new game. Here are the four questions, and I'm going to go through each one after uh, I read these four. How many players and how many sides? Electronic or non-electronic? Who is your audience? And what is the player going to do? How many players and how many sides? This is a practical way to answer the broader question, which is, is there human active opposition, or a good semblance of it, or not? It's very important, important because it addresses the most fundamental divide in games, which is not electronic or non-electronic. It's whether there's human opposition or programmed opposition. The reason for that is programmed opposition, whether it's computer or paper-based, cannot possibly, at this stage of world history, match the cleverness and unpredictability of human opposition. Paper programming is particularly primitive. And that makes a great deal of difference in your game. In fact, many games where there's programmed opposition are actually puzzles. There is a solution. Whereas when you have humans, there's rarely a solution, although checkers and chess are actually puzzles and there's a solution. It's just that humans are not good enough to figure out the solution in chess and not quite good enough to figure out the solution in checkers, although a few people have come close. The second question, is it electronic or a video game or is it a non-electronic game? And some people say digital and analog, and that's a total misuse of those words, so I try not to use them. Of course, nowadays there are games that have versions for both types, but there are significant differences in the strengths and weaknesses of each type. And of course, you may not have the skills, or you may not know people who have the skills to do a video game. In that respect, the tabletop game, the non-electronic game, is much more practical. But even if you do have the skills, one format or the other is not ideal for everything. For example, tabletop is not good for hiding information where video is. Tabletop is much better for social interaction because the people are sitting around a game at a table than video generally is. So a game that fits one format or the other might not work so well with the other format, at least not without drastic changes. The third question who is your audience, your target market? There is no perfect game. There are dozens of genres for a reason, because there are lots of people with lots of different tastes. The tastes of game players are much like the tastes of music lovers. Example, I dislike rap, I like classical. Some people love rap, some people hate classical, some are indifferent to both, and so on. The same thing happens in games. When you choose your audience, you're choosing what kind of gameplay you want to emphasize and what you want to avoid. Now, occasionally you'll make your game and test it and find out it appeals to a different audience than you intended. And in that case, frequently, if you're independent, you'll go with that audience. But if you're working for a company that sets the objectives, if you've been hired to do a particular kind of game, then you may have to alter the game to appeal to the target market that was originally intended. The fourth question is, what is the player going to do? Do in capital letters. Games are activities. They're not movies. They're not novels. They're not plays. They're games. Although it has to be said that the trend in both video and tabletop games is that they, gradually players are becoming more passive and play is becoming more passive. The let's play movement, where you watch a game being played by somebody instead of playing it yourself, is indicative of the move to passivity. But I'll admit, I like to watch people play games. 
though I'm interested as much in the people as in the game. So I want to watch people that I know, not people who I don't know. But think about this. If there's no activity, don't you have a movie or something other than a game? So get down to the details. Visualize what players are going to do and ask yourself, is that enjoyable for my target market? Do that for as much of the game as you can uh, before you make the prototype. That'll make the prototype better, and you might even decide not to make one at all for this particular conception, or you might decide to change it drastically because you're not seeing what the players are going to do that will be interesting or enjoyable. If you haven't asked yourself these four questions consciously when you've started making a game, you've been answering them without realizing that you were asking. Think about it.